In this video, I'm going to show you how to dump N64 cartridges and saves using the Retro Stage Retro Blaster Programmer. As most of you know, dumping your own cartridges and games is a big deal to me, so the Retro Blaster Programmer from Retro Stage has been just a very important part of that process ever since I picked one up last year. My favorite things about it is that it is pretty minimalistic and it is easy to use. And it has worked at dumping my entire N64 library as well as all my Super Nintendo, Genesis, NES, and Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games. And Retro Stage is continuing to add new system compatibility to it with TurboGrafx-16 coming sometime soon or if you're watching this video in the future, maybe it's already here. I don't know. But looking forward to it and there's also a new version of the Retro Blaster in development. Like, ah, it's just so exciting. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. So first things first, you are going to need Retro Stage's Retro Blaster Programmer. Unfortunately, it looks like as I'm recording this video, they're out of stock. Thank you, part shortage. But keep paying attention to Retro Stage's website or Twitter for when a restock may happen. But you can pick up the programmer as well as a system uh, adapter as well, so N64. There's also N64 Pro if you happen to be wanting to dump developmental cartridges. That one lets you do that. For this video, I'm focusing just on consumer N64. And on this page, if you scroll down, you'll also see the Retro Blaster software and firmware link. So you can click on this to be taken over to Retro Stages GitHub, where you can get the latest release of the Retro Blaster software. And once you have those downloaded, you can just get them extracted. And we're ready to move on to the next step. Next, you're going to need physical N64 games that you are trying to dump. So I just grabbed a quick selection from my shelf here. And finally, you need to get your Retro Blaster programmer hooked up to your PC with the included USB cable. And then just get your appropriate cartridge adapter inserted. So right now I have the NES cartridge adapter in and I need to switch it over to the N64 one. So, you can do the uh, good old Sharpie method to remove an other cartridge adapter. This is a lot easier with two hands, so we're just going to skip ahead for a second here. And now I'm ready to insert my N64 cartridge adapter. So there's a nice little divot on both uh, the Retro Stage adapter and the uh, cartridge adapter, letting you know which way it needs to be inserted. So you just uh, line that up here. and push it on down, good to go. And for N64, you need to make sure that the switch on it is set to three volts. And then finally, get the game that you want to dump and insert it onto the adapter. So now on your computer, just open up the Retro Blaster programming software. And we're gonna select the N64 tab here, and we're gonna tell it to dump the ROM. And then I'm just going to put it on my desktop, and this is, just going to name it Ocarina of Time real quick. And for all retail games, it should be able to detect the file size automatically, and then just start the dumping process. And depending on the size of the game is how long the dump is going to take. And once that dump is complete, you now have yourself a nice ROM of your physical cartridge. But what is a ROM file from your physical cartridge without the save file? And that is another thing that I mentioned previously that the Retro Blaster is capable of doing is dumping save files. So you'll notice that there's three different save types, EEPROM, FlashRAM, and SRAM. So you will need to know which save uh, file type your game is currently using. And thankfully, our friends over at Micro64 have us covered. They have every N64 cartridge listed with its save type. So a lot of games used controller pack only to save on costs when making their games. So these games can't have their saves dumped using this because it's on a controller pack. You need to use a controller pack save dumper of some sort. For me, I typically use an EverDrive for that. But we got EEPROM games here, SRAM games, and then FlashRAM games. So, 
for Ocarina of Time, I believe that is an SRAM game. So, yep, Ocarina of Time, SRAM. So I don't actually know what save is on this Ocarina of Time cart, so we're just going to dump it anyway. Put it on my desktop. There we go. And there we go, the save is now dumped as well. But now I'm just going to move on and dump my other games and save files. Now my copy of Super Mario 64 has a fully complete 120 star save file on it that I streamed a couple years back. So I definitely want to make sure I have that save. So going back into Micro 64, I can look for Super Mario 64 save file type. Super Mario 64 is using uh, EEPROM. Okay. Now, Resident Evil 2 on N64 is one of the 64 megabyte games, so it's going to take the longest to dump at roughly 11 minutes, so thankfully there weren't too many 64 megabyte N64 games. But I don't have a save file that I'm going to be dumping from Resident Evil 2, so I'm just going to move on to the next game. And with Sculptor's Cut being done, that is the last of my demonstration cartridges that I was dumping for this video. And the entire process took less than 50 minutes. So, bit of a time-consuming process if you have larger games, but so worth it in the end. At least to me. But, now I can go ahead and run these games through a uh, verification tool if I so chose. I'm not choosing to today, but... There are all my ROM files. Here are my two save files. So these are now ready to be used on emulation or EverDrives. Minimize, minimize that real quick. So just for demonstration purposes, you can add these games into a N64 games folder. Drag them in. Um, hello. And there we go, those are all ready to be run. Now, save files are a bit more interesting. It really depends on what you're trying to use them on, if they're going to work natively. So if you have an EverDrive V3 or X7, like these should work automatically on an EverDrive. So if I wanted to add the games to my EverDrive, I already have them, but I mean, I'd just drag them in. But for the save files, you could go into your EverDrive save folder. And then just drag them in. Make sure they match the name of the game that you are trying to use. And they should work automatically. And depending on which emulator you're using, they might work out of the gate as well. But I like to use RetroArch for my N64 emulation. And unfortunately, these save files will not work on RetroArch by default. And that is where this handy dandy tool from Dreren comes in to play nicely. So you could download a RetroArch Moopin 64 Plus SRAM converter. So I'm going to download the Windows version. And with that downloaded, I'm going to get it extracted. Open up the folder. And I now have the SRAM converter here. So the way that um, RetroArch and Moopin64 Plus within RetroArch saves games, it combines memory card files, the save types, all into one big container files. So it 
just doesn't work out of the gate. So if I wanted to get these save files to work, I just need to drag them into the converter program and it will pop out an appropriate uh, Moopin64 Plus save file for RetroArch. And then I can do the same thing with Ocarina of Time. And there we go, these are now save files that will work within those games. So I'm just going to add these to my RetroArch saves folder. And now I'll open up RetroArch. And I'm gonna load up Super Mario 64 as that is the game that I had the completed save file for. And there it is. That is my 120 star completed save file that I just dumped from my official N64 cartridge. And yeah, I didn't have a save file in that Zelda cart like I thought I didn't. I knew I didn't. I think the battery in it died a long time ago. But either way, ROM is working. But that is not the end of the usefulness of these utilities. Say you have save files that you've played in emulation and you want to add them back onto your original cartridge. For example, my recent playthrough of GoldenEye 007 on stream that I did completely in emulation and unlocked everything within it. I want to add that to my real cartridge now because I want to have that stuff on actual N64 hardware. So unfortunately, again, RetroArch's default save type does not work by default within an EverDrive or real cartridge. You have to get that converted. So I can just open back up the uh, RetroArch converter program here and drag my GoldenEye save into it. And you'll see that it pops up a bunch of different things. So we have the EEPROM save, that is our main save file. And then there are four mem packs. And GoldenEye doesn't use the memory card, so we don't need those. But now this save file is ready to be used on real cartridges as well as EverDrive. So I like to put it on both actually. So I'm just going to add that into my EverDrive save folder. And I'm going to tell it to overwrite the save file that was already on it because I want the 100% completed one. There we go. Now it's ready for use on EverDrive. And now to add it to real cartridge, I just need to put GoldenEye onto my Retro Blaster programmer. Pull back up the Retro Blaster programmer software. And now we know our GoldenEye save file type is EEPROM. You can look at the file extensions to get a little quick hint of which one's which. Or you can resort back to our favorite little Micro 64 save game file type list to see which one it is. So look, GoldenEye007 EEPROM, yay. So within the Retro Blaster software, we're going to tell it to write EEPROM, and then it's going to ask us for an EEPROM save to write. So we're just going to choose our GoldenEye save file here. And it is now writing that save file onto my original cartridge. And that save file has now been written to my original GoldenEye cartridge, so I'm going to go test it out on my N64 to make sure that is the case. Unfortunately, I don't have a way of recording my N64 hardware at the moment, so I will be right back. So it actually took a few attempts of writing the EEPROM for it to actually take effect on my real cartridge, but it did eventually go through, and now I have that save file on my GoldenEye 007 cartridge. And just for another example, I have my Pokemon Stadium save file from my EverDrive that I used for my Gen 1 Challenge streams. So this is a near completed Pokemon Stadium save file. And I want to add that to my real cartridge. So this uses the flash RAM save type. So I'm going to tell it to write the flash RAM. I'm going to choose Pokemon Stadium 1. And let it do its thing. And that save file transferred over perfectly. Just tested it out on the N64 and everything is glorious. And there you have it, a method of dumping your N64 games, saves, using those saves in emulation, or transferring emulation saves back onto your original carts. The Retro Blaster programmer and software really let you do a lot of stuff for various systems, and again, I just absolutely love how easy it is to use. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video, I hope you have found it informative and it helps you along in your emulation projects. Now, here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, depending on how much you like this tutorial. Also, be sure to hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. Loads coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to all of you. Big, big, big thank you to all of our current backers. Thank you for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You're amazing. You're champions. You're our rock stars. Just thank you so much.
But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.